is James Comic and the bike. Welcome you all back for another half ash production. And today we're gonna run into the Metropolitan Museum and check out the retrospective of John Baldessari. Pure beauty. Well we're here at the Iris and B. Gerald Cantor Exhibition Hall at the Met. And we're gonna take a little run through of John Baldessari Pure Beauty. It's a painting that is its own documentation. This was done between 1966 and 68. And I think this is part of the series that Baldessari did when he hired a professional sign painter. As I understand it, this exhibition covers the work from 1961 to 2010. And it's got over 120 pieces in the show. Well, this is number two oil and paper on board from 1963. And this might be one of the oldest pieces in the show. Oh, bird number one, 1962. I guess that's kind of pop. Oh, I like this. This is kind of funky. This is art less in 1964. Looks like he's got some, well, I guess those are printed rubber stamp letters. This is Falling Cloud. 1965. This is the title piece of the show, Pure Beauty, 1966 to 68. And Baldessari kind of decided that he didn't want to be a painter anymore about 1968 and uh, took all of his paintings and burned them and baked them into cookies and uh, I guess in 1970 did a piece called the cremation piece and then he started hiring sign painters to do his text works Clement Greenberg ethic judgments are given and contained in the immediate experience of art they coincide with it okay tips for artists who want to sell Generally speaking, paintings with light colors sell more quickly than paintings with dark colors. Uh, somebody forgot to tell Rembrandt that. I think the other thing that uh, Baldessari is well known for is his mixture of the text with photography. And a lot of these are found photographs. Lighted moving message viewpoint. Jenny Holzer got her ideas from. Well, I think a lot of uh, this work is actually about the question of what is art, why are paintings valued. A painting by Hildegard Reiner. Well, we're going to sweep through this gallery here, which is featuring mostly his uh, serial photography from the early 70s. And uh, that John might have been one of the pioneers that established this uh, this format, and it really became kind of a a very common and established form for a lot of conceptual artists. You know, he was also, I think, one of the first people that seriously got into the video and. You know, the conceptual and uh, linguistic side of that. Well, this show is actually pretty extensive, so we're only going to get a an abbreviated view of this. Car color series. All car, cars parked in the west side of Main Street between Bay and Bicknell Street, Santa Monica. You know, I was just talking to Walter Robinson, and uh, he happened to comment that Baldessari was kind of 
given credit for or blamed for a lot of the artists that turned into the pictures generation. And one of the things that distinguished the pictures generation was the way they were able to conflate uh, the two movements of basically pop and uh, conceptual minimalism. Well, this is titled Portrait Self Number One as Control and 11 Alterations by Reproduction and Airbrush. So we've got John Baldessardi and 11 different versions of himself. He is a pretty good technician. I've got a series of his photographs. For all interested, remarks will begin in about five minutes and begin towards the end of the exhibition. Okay, well, we're going to go see the remarks. So John Baldessari is probably one of the most influential conceptual artists, West Coast artists, alive today. And as you can see, this got kind of turnout here. Good morning. I'm Tom Campbell, director of the Metropolitan Museum, and it's a, a pleasure to welcome you here There's today. John. Oh man, he's I a tall dude. I hope you had a chance to see the two monumental photo compositions in the Great Hall as you came into the building this morning. Those murals, Brain Cloud and Palm Tree Seascape, are by John Baldessari, from whom you'll hear in a moment. A wonderful return of you to your own, um, to your own works of yeah, art. Like, yeah, it's almost like a movie, isn't it? <laughs> my God, it's made in my brain. <laughs> so, um, John is happy to take any questions, as am I. Please. Uh, yeah, I have a question about the role of film. You've already mentioned films and movies a number of times. Um, and the role of film in your work overall. In particular, the uh, films from like the early 70s, like you have know, Script Here and another one called Title. Um, I've read reference to this, references to those films as being part of the structural film tradition, and yet you also have a very strong affiliation with you know, the traditions of Hollywood cinema. And so I wonder how you sort of reconcile those two different possible approaches and how that might also inform your work in general. You can always tell a video, a, a 70s video by the artist, because at the end, the artist gets up and turns off the recorder. Very <laughs> 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 sign. Um, so, um, it, it, yeah, this it, 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 it was a very explosive era uh, to experiment uh, uh, with flex and motion. Yeah, so, and it also, yes, very much informed my specialist film. So the movie idea came later, and it wasn't even a conscious one. I was just trying to find uh, photographs to recycle, uh, and any, anything. You know, with your lights to go dumpster diving, and photo processing houses, and you know, photographs off the street, whatever. Uh, and somebody told me about this place uh, in Burbank outside of LA, where they sold, uh, I, I didn't really care about that. I just wanted the, 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 the photographic material. Yeah, you could get them there, but you know, very expensive, ten, twenty dollars a shot. I, I really don't care about movies. I just want the images of that from the movies. And he said, "Oh yeah, we got bins and bins of those. You could have them for ten cents a piece." Uh, he said, "Nobody knew the stars. They went. Well, it wasn't straight to video then, but you know, uh, the theaters saw." And they were also in a minute to mingle with eight by ten glossies from uh, the LA Times that they had done all that. So it was a treasure trove for me. All right. Then, uh, as I began to use that material more and more, I got thinking about uh, the stuff from the movies uh, and trying to classify them. And my first two classifications were scenes of violence and scenes of love scenes. With the buds, basically, what the movies are. And then you have all kinds of subdivisions within that. And then I realized that people carry images or ideas from films they've seen uh, um, in the movie theaters or in the TV uh, around the world. 